Hello, in this video we're going to discuss Bookings, which is a Microsoft 365 app. Bookings allows visitors to make appointments with you based upon um, the date and the length of time that you have set forth for the appointment. So it allows you as the creator to control when the appointments can be made and the length of time of those appointments. It makes uh, basically like a web page and the person can go in and then make an appointment based upon the selection. It sends follow-up emails and reminders to you um, as the as the coordinator as well as the person who is signing up the visitor. It also adds appointments to your as well as the person signing up Outlook calendar. So let's jump in for a demo. To begin, you want to log into your Office 365 account. You can do this by logging into your email. Then in the top left corner, you want to choose All Apps. From there, you can choose Bookings. This will give you a list of all the Office 365 apps that are available. In this case, however, we're going to use Bookings. This is the Booking dashboard. Over on the side, you can choose to open Bookings that you've already created. So I've already made one for office hours. I've made one for advising. So I can um, open whichever ones I've already created. Or in this case, we're going to make a new Booking calendar. From there, it'll ask you to tell tell about your business. In this case, you're really just telling what this booking is going to be about. So in this case, I'm going to say fall 2019 signups. So this is going to be my place where whenever I have something going on where my students need to sign up, I'm going to use this booking page. So I choose continue. It'll take me just a second and it will create it for you. It'll also send you an email saying that it was created. Now that the booking is created, you'll see it over here on the left panel. And again, you can always get to it by going to open and choosing whichever one you need. So from here, you can add a logo for this particular sign up. You could upload a new logo, a picture of yourself, whatever you needed to, to represent um, that, particular, that particular sign up. Next, we want to create our services. You can add to this as the semester goes on, but this is where you're going to add what they can sign up for. So by default, there's initial console, but we're going to change that to be. So in this case, the service name is going to be advising. Um, I would add a description of what that's going to involve. So in this case, I'm just telling the students that if I'm their advisor, they need to sign up for an appointment and to bring a list of the classes they plan to take. I include the location of where we're meeting, and then I include how long these appointments are going to be. So in this case, it's set to an hour, but maybe it needs to be, um, you know, a different time than that. So it might need to only be a 30 minute session. You can also turn on a buffering time and you could put in like the students cannot book an appointment an hour before their session is to start. So if they're going to start at 2, it's not going to let them book after 1 for that 2 o'clock session so that, you know, maybe you need to have time to get there. Maybe you need to have time to plan it. So you can turn buffering on if you want to. In this case, obviously, there's not a price involved, so we're just going to ignore that. And then we can determine when they're going to get reminders. So by default, they'll get a reminder one day. Um, they'll get one saying that, you know, we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Remember that you have an appointment. But you can also add an email reminder if you want. And so maybe I want one, say, one hour. And I want it sent to not only the customer, so the person um, booking the appointment, and not only the staff, which would be me in this case. I want it sent to all attendees, and then I can describe what I want here. So you can fill in what you want that email to say, and we'll save that. So you can add in different email reminders to the customer, which is the visitor, um, to you, which is the staff member, or to both. Also, you can add in custom fields, and so we can modify those if we like. So this is what it, the, the booking is going to ask the students um, or the, the person who is signing up to include. So it's going to ask for their email, which is probably a good idea. Um, it can ask for their phone number, address, and specific notes if they have any. You can choose to make these required to where they have to add notes, they have to add their phone number, 
right now the only thing required is their email it has a spot for these different ones but they don't have to put those in if you don't want that spot to be available at all you can uncheck it and then that would make it to where that is not a line at all so all it would ask them is for their email and it is required we can also add additional questions if we want to so maybe I add in a text question and I might say what is your major and then that would be a question that would be uh, required. And it would ask them that on the form as well. So we'll choose OK, and that is where we added in those custom fields. Next, moving on, we'll see that this is going to be published on the booking page, which obviously we do. You could have it unchecked if you were maybe working on it or it wasn't going to go live yet and you didn't want the students um, or the visitors to be able to see it yet. Um, you can use the default scheduling options, but we might want to turn this off and look specifically at them so we can customize them. So these are going to be 30 minute increments, um, so that's fine. Just make sure that it aligns with how long the appointment is. So if the appointments are 30 minutes and the time increments can be 30 minutes. Or if you want maybe um, a, a little buffer time, you could add that in as well. You can also add in a lead time for bookings or cancellations. So maybe, um, so maybe they need to book 12 hours in advance or cancel 12 hours in advance. And then when they can start booking, so this one would let them book, you know, a year in advance or whenever it was created. But you might want them not to be able to book until a certain time period. So you can add those in. So in this case, uh, it'll tell you what types of email notifications to offer uh, it's going to email you when a booking is created or changed i would also recommend turning this one on sending a meeting invite to the customer in addition to the confirmation email so that they can add it onto their calendar this one um, is a little bit tricky and a little bit different it depends on how you're using the sign up this one would allow customers to pick a specific person for the booking. Now, in this case, I'm the only person doing the, the advising sessions. But say that you are working in partnership with three other teachers or with a different group of people, and you could have it to where you have one booking, and then they could pick which person they want to sign up an appointment with. So teacher A, teacher B, teacher C. So again, that would involve multiple staff people, people uh, multiple faculty using the same um, booking page and so I'll show you how to set that up so we'll just leave that selected for right now but just know it might not be useful if you're the only person doing the appointments so then you want to make sure to add in your availability by default it's going to say bookable when staff are free that's actually looking at your Outlook calendar and whenever you don't have something um, on your calendar it's going to mark it as free so that's probably not what you want to do you probably want to make, uh, make some specifics so in that case we're going to choose custom hours so that we can customize when we want these appointments. So maybe I'm going to be doing appointments. Um, this is going to be recurring every week. So this is going to be from every single week. And maybe I don't want that. I want to do it per, I want to define hours per specific weeks. So in this case, I'm going to do the X and say that I'm not bookable just any old week. Then I'm going to set different availability for a date range. So from there, I might choose, okay, the week of the 10th through the 14th, I'm going to put in some specific time periods, and I'm going to say on Monday, I'm going to be available from 9 to 1.15, and I'm not going to be bookable at all on Tuesday, maybe on Wednesday from 11.15 to 1 p.m not on Thursday, and then maybe from 12.15 to 1.15 on Friday. And that's for that week. Then I might say, well, you know, the next week I'm going to be available different times. So I can set availability there, and I can say, okay, well, this is going to be the week of the 17th through the 21st. And I'm going to put in my specific times here. And in maybe this case, I'm going to be available on the Tuesday, Thursday. So you can basically set up your appointments by week, which is probably how you would do advising. Um, but again, you're going to do it per week in this case, which is not necessarily how the system was designed to do, but it is a way you can get it to set up that way. So I've added in my times here for those two weeks, which is all that I'm going to do. Again, I could keep adding in different weeks if I wanted to. 
And so I've completed all that different piece. And so I'm going to save this particular service. So this was my advising service. Now say that I have another service that I want them to be able to book. So I'm going to add another service and maybe I just have this as general office hours. So in that case, I give the service a name, I give it a description, a location, how long the appointments are going to be. So my advising appointments were 30 minutes, but maybe these I make an hour. So again, you can set them up completely differently. You can then uh, add in custom fields if you would like. Remember that one custom field uh, before had what is your major, so you can add in custom fields if you would like, um, or you can take off custom fields if you would like. So you can pick that specifically for this sign up. Um, publishing options make it publish it, uh, make it available on your booking site, and then you can change the scheduling as well. So. I'm going to uncheck the default scheduling. These time increments are going to be 30 minutes because, again, they're a little bit different than the other ones. Maybe they have a three-hour minimum lead time. I do want the I do want it to send me an email when one, someone has booked. I do want it to send an invite to the customer as well. Um, and then, of course, I can allow for multiple staffing if I wanted to. And again, I'm going to leave this on just so I can show you what it's what it's doing and what that means. But for the most part in this particular situation, you actually wouldn't use that because you're going to be the only person that the student would be meeting with. Then you want to do particular booking times again because this is going to be for while the uh, the two week uh, booking times that we made a minute ago that was for advising so now we're going to make booking times for our um, our office hours so they're going to be different times so basically you're making two different signups that are going to be on the same booking page so in this case it's going to be recurring weekly and it's going to be every time it's going to be every day from let's say I want to make sure that they don't overlap so I don't get double booked. So let's say that it's going to be from 5 to 6 on Mondays and Wednesdays is when my office hours are going to be, which I don't think overlap with what I just set in my other ones. So they're going to be recurring every week, and that's going to be those. So now I'm going to be able to save this one. And now you see I have two different signups, if you will, one for advising, one for office hours. The next thing is to be uh, come and use staff, and I'll show you what that means. For the most part, you're going to be the only person that is going to be the staff member if you're the teacher and you're doing advising in office hours. Let's just say, however, that I have another staff member, you know, another colleague that we're doing this together. So I can add a staff member. And I can actually search for someone and add them in. So let's say that Jared is going to be helping me with advising. So I find him, I can include, he can either be a viewer, an administrator, or a guest. And when you select them, it tells you what they can do. So in this case, he can read all the bookings on the calendar, but he can't modify or delete them. So basically, I set it up, and he helps me out. Now, if we were true collaborators, I could make him an administrator, and he could edit all the settings that I just set up. I could also make him a guest to where he's able to see the bookings, but he can't really open the booking mailbox, which is probably not enough, so I'll at least make him a viewer. I also want to let him know when a booking is assigned to them, because obviously he needs to know when uh, somebody has done that. I can then input his availability or change his availability if necessary. So I'll save this, and now you see that we have two uh, staff members. So now what I can do is I can actually come back to my services pages, and maybe he's going to help me with advising. So I can come and assign staff members to this one, and I can choose me and Jared for that one. So both of us are going to work on advising. For office hours, it's just going to be me. So when they sign up, it's automatically going to assign me to their office hour meeting. If they sign up for advising, it might assign me or Jared. They can pick it or they can pick Jared or they can pick me or they can just say anybody and it's going to pull the one whose availability is during that time. And again, you probably won't use that unless you're working in collaboration, uh, maybe as a department or maybe as a group of professors, that kind of thing. But I did want to show you and see what it was. So now we want to go to our booking page, which is just going to be the overall um, page 
to show our services. So in this case, we want to require an Office 365 account. That way it's only going to allow those with an actual account to book. So they can't book through their Yahoo, their Gmail, anything like that. They do have to use their Office 365 account. The rest of this we're actually not going to fill out because we already have it filled out on our particular services that we just did. So I am going to check to notify the business um, when, it, when an appointment is created, send an email to the customer like we did before. So uh, the rest of this, I'm going to check this to allow them to speak, pick a specific person for the booking, but I'm not going to fill in the availability because I already filled that in when I did our services. You can pick a color scheme if you would like. And then you can uh, show the time slots in the business time zone. So from there, we're able to save and publish. And when we save and publish, it's going to actually let us go in and view it. So there's going to be the link. So this is the link that you would give to other people, put it in an email, put it on your website. This is going to be the link to get to your booking. But let's open this booking to see what it looks like. So this is our booking page. This is the overall page. And you can see that this is the calendar, this is the adding of the details. So what they would want to do is to pick which service they're looking for. So advising, which are 30 minute sessions, office hours, which are an hour, and you could have multiple um, services. This is the services that we included. So say that I'm a student and I'm wanting to do advising, I choose that. Then it's going to show me the available time slots. So based upon what we put in, we can see and click on the available time slot. Notice that they're 30 minute increments because that's what we put in. And then I can choose to book with Autumn or Jared because remember I had two people on that particular one. So it would let me cherry pick which person or I could pick anyone and it would assign it to the person that had availability at the time. Now notice when I choose office hours, I have a different schedule because remember I put in a different schedule for it. And the only person that I can book with is Autumn because that's the only staff member I put on there. So let's book an office hour on the 10th with Autumn. I scroll down, I fill out my name and email. So I fill in my information, I choose book. Oh, I have to make sure to select my particular time, so I select my day and my time. I book. And then it's going to send me an email, it's going to send the customer the email, it's going to send all of us an email saying, hey, somebody's booked at this time, and it'll also send a calendar invite to add it to your Outlook calendar for you. So we're going to get this email confirmation shortly. So this gives us a summary. I could reschedule, I could cancel the booking, or I could make a new booking if I wanted to. So maybe let's do a new booking. And maybe in this case, I need to sign up for an advising session. So maybe I need to sign up for an advising session at one o'clock. And maybe I'm gonna pick anyone here. And then I'll fill out my information. And so I've given my information, and then I gave a specific notice to what I need help with. I would book and then it would show me my booking. So as the uh, creator of this signup, I got a email saying that this new booking has been created with this person at this day and time. It also automatically went on my calendar. So she had one for five o'clock here. Immediately it gets added onto my Outlook calendar with this information, which is what she would also get as well. And remember, to get the link to your booking page to share, you would just go into your Microsoft Office booking app. You would open your booking from wherever it was located, and then you're just going to grab this link and use it for your bookings.